Welcome to this video tutorial on painting the Legion's Death Guard. In this video tutorial you will learn how to paint a dirty white, how to weather metallics, how to apply simple weathering across your miniature and how to apply decals. To begin with we use walnut to build up on top of a black base coat. The airbrush is running at 20 psi and the paint is thin roughly two parts paint to one part thinner. I'm using life color thinner for uh, this operation, for this tutorial. Two to three very thin coats applied to the majority of the miniature. Only the very darkest recesses aren't uh, painted. Next up we use Nakar, for, again from Scale 75, which has this wonderful green bone quality to it. And again, this is roughly thinned down two parts paint to one part thinner. And again, I'm using life color thinner for this with 20 PSI. The airbrush is quite close to the miniature. My aim here is to build up the first coat on the transition. It is not to add a very strong, consistent layer on top. We'll be adding two to three consistent layers with the airbrush to build up the tonal shift from shadow to light. Walnut being built up on top of a black base coat will naturally appear darker. And in contrast to this, then the car, this bright white greenish bone colour, will act as a really nice foil to those shadows. As you can see, the airbrush is constantly in motion. I do not let it settle in any one area for any amount of time. My left hand, my control hand, isn't moving. It's staying static, whereas the airbrush is in constant motion. Make sure you apply zenithal highlight to the shoulder pads, as we'll be adding pigment to it later, we'll be adding moss green. In effect, we are creating a pre-shading layer without the hassle of uh, performing any color changes because this is already a light color we don't need to worry about repriming the surface black and then adding white okay next up I take a post-it note I'll open up a small area just so I can airbrush the inner layer and I will add moss green this is thin one part paint to two parts thinner next up I'm done with the airbrush I will use necro gold from scale 75 and I will apply this to all the shoulder pad ba uh, banding on the pauldrons as well as any other areas I feel could do with a bit of saturation, a bit of colour. Dark aluminium uh, is indelicately applied to any silver areas. I'm not too neat at this stage, I'll be painting the bolter cover later on. Uh, when it comes to the backpack I do want to be more circumspect uh, but with this layer uh, I'll be adding the thermal black on top no need to worry. Okay, Shaish Purple, I believe that's how it's pronounced, is applied into the very darkest recesses of the Necro Gold uh, pauldrons. This will help deepen any subsequent shadows that we will apply on top. When working with gold, it is a really good idea to shade it with purples, as gold is essentially a yellow, and we can desaturate it, we can add interesting shadows using its complementary colour complementary colour to yellow is purple. Okay, next up we use a liberal shade of Agrax Earthshade into the recesses as well as Coelia Green Shade. The Coelia Green Shade will add that otherworldly patina effect to the armour plate, whereas the Agrax Earthshade will offer us a very nice shadow to the bone colour that we've built up so far. For this procedure, I'm using a Rosemary Co. Series 77, size 0 brush. Sorry, it's Series 22. Uh, it's the Klinsky Sable Hair. By overlapping the Agrax Earthshade and the Quelia Green Shade, we're able to offer really, really nice interest in shadows, rather than the slightly boring only Agrax Shade. 
If you did want further control over the placement of your shadows, apply a layer of gloss varnish on top of the miniature and this will break the surface tension. That simply means the paint is more predictable in where it flows. For this video tutorial however I have not added that gloss stage, instead I've used a very good thin brush with a that comes to a very fine point and I've worked neatly. Make sure all the banding receives at least one coat of the Agrax Earthshade to differentiate the armor plates from one another. You can also add a very liberal uh, layer of this to the bolter casing as well as the pauldrons. By adding that first layer of violet, you ensure that the shadows are kept in place and are very, very dark. We have added another layer of depth to the miniature that otherwise would not be attainable with Agrax Earthshade alone. Quilia Green Shade is then added uh, in spots to the bronze on the backpack to desaturate the, the bronze and also give a more interesting broken fractured appearance to the miniature. You can also add this into the very darkest recesses again to give that sickly underglow effect, that unhealthy look to the Death Guard armor plate. I'll add a few streaks here and there using Agrax Earthshade as well as Coelia Green Shade to give the impression of rain hitting the surface of the marine then rolling down the armor plates. Next up, I take silver from Vallejo Air and I'll remove the majority of the paint from a piece of sponge. The tweezers give me greater control over the application. I make sure that I hit the outer casing to act as a highlight as well as the silver bolt uh, inner portions of it. Uh, I'll apply this over the majority, well over any silver area that I see. It has this really nice uh, overlap of highlighting the miniature as well as adding chipping. Next up I will use gold from Vallejo. Uh, same procedure I will remove most of the paint from the sponge and I'll try and be as careful as possible not to overlap it on the green but mistakes happen in which case the, you need to go ahead and just embrace them. Any very gratuitous marks I can remove by simply rolling my thumb across it or my finger across it. To apply decals we need to stick to a strict formula. Firstly we need to apply gloss varnish to the intended surface. We need to add warm water to remove or activate the decals themselves. And then we need to use a combination of microsol and microset to make sure they bind onto the surface completely and utterly. So once the gloss varnish has been applied to the surface of the miniature we need to allow it to completely and utterly dry. Please refer to the side of whichever gloss varnish bottle you've chosen to use uh, for further instructions on exact drying times. Next up I take micro set and I apply a liberal layer across the surface of where the decal will bind onto. I remove the decal from the backing sheet from the backing paper. Then I apply another layer of micro set on top. This will then be allowed to cure for around two to three hours. It's a long procedure but by undergoing allowing proper drying times we do get a painted on appearance. You can further help the binding process by using an earbud to help press it down onto the surface of the miniature to make sure any irregular edges are smoothed out. 
This is done initially with micro set and after the required drying time of two to three hours has elapsed, we will then add a second coat of micro sol to help dissolve the agent even further. And this is allowed to rest for around five to six hours. Long procedure, but it does give a painted on appearance to the decal. It's worth having that patience. And here we have the mansion is full of glory. Thank you very much for watching the video tutorial. Wish you the best of luck. Thank you. Bye-bye.